Welcome back to Spitball and Cards. In today's video, we're talking about FOMO because Shohei Otani is the best baseball player of all time. All right. In this episode, we have Scott, Phil, Chris, and Jeff. Phil, do you have Otani cards? I know Chris and Jeff have so many and they're like all happy on the bottom of the screen. Do you have yeah. some? Wish I had more though. I guess it's all part of FOMO. But yeah, yeah. exactly. So I don't have any and that's okay. I And I'm still not going to buy any and that's okay because there's something else I'm going after, but we want to talk about it because I, even the night he hit 50 home runs, he had three home runs that night, 10 RBI. It was crazy. I messaged Phil. I'm like, Phil, should I just sell all my cards and buy something? And he said how stupid it would have been. And I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Talked me off the edge a little bit, but is this an opportunity like the last opportunity to buy again before he goes to the postseason and does great. And then, you know, all these things, we've had questions to each of us about Otani. So let's talk about Otani. Let's talk about FOMO, all that good stuff and go from there. So any initial thoughts around FOMO and Otani in general? Uh, what, what do you think, Jeff? A lot to think about that. Uh, as, as you mentioned, Chris and I have picked up a couple Otani cards. Um, but like Phil said, you can never have enough. And the hard part is the market is kind of going through some hysteria, some Otani hysteria, which leads to this pulling feeling of, well, should we sell? But you also want to buy more because he's doing so well, or you feel like if I do sell, what else in the hobby would I put that money in? So, uh, and those are the kind of messages that I've been getting, like this, the Otani market is so high, I'm thinking of selling, but at the same time, I don't know what I would rather have. And I think that's an interesting discussion to have. Yeah. Yeah. FOMO was very real. Like Jeff and I do have like a decent little stash of Otani cards, but damned if the last week I've just been scrolling eBay looking for more and every, every card I don't have just looks so great right now. <laughs> All these Instagram posts are just like, I got me, I got me drooling over other people's cards. Um, but yeah, it's tough. Like what, what do we do with these prices? I've had, I, I got a lot of messages like Jeff. We put out a couple of Otani videos on our, on our Blabin channel. This one guy messaged me and said he's got like a really nice Bowman Chrome Auto. That's great. If he doesn't know, is now the time to sell? And I'm like, it's a great time to sell. Is it the time to sell? We don't know. I was like, well, what would you want to like put that money into? Like sometimes that makes it easier if you have another card you're targeting. And he's like, well, it's my only Otani. So it'd be hard to watch him continue to be great and not own anything. But I'm supposed to be <laughs> proposing to my girlfriend in the next like six months. So I could use the money on an engagement ring. I'm like, Bro, that's probably what you should do. Like, that's a great story. Sell your Otani and buy an engagement ring. And and his response was, but then will I never be able to buy an Otani again? Which I thought was funny. So, I mean, that's the pull that we're feeling. It's Otani or your potential significant other for life. Mm. Yeah, so Jeff, Jeff and I, um, earlier this year, I forget the context, but we both kind of concluded that this might be the last year to buy Otani before his prices get out of control. And I think it sort of goes against, not completely, but Scott's mindset has been, well, I think his prices will be cheaper at some point than they are today. And I guess here's the thing, just because they might be cheaper than they are today, it doesn't mean that they won't go up after today's prices, right? And that's what we're seeing. And I think one of my issues is Talking, you know, Scott off the ledge being like, don't go crazy, still focus on that other card you're interested in and not in Otani right now is me being the holder of Otani cards. I, I can't, I can't sell what I have and it's not a no brainer. It's very tough. And I think holding is the right move. Could be wrong. If you're holding high end stuff of his lower end stuff. I don't know. I don't know. It might be a good time to sell some of that. But, you know, depending on when you bought, you know, that could drive some of it. But mm -hmm. this, this whole like hysteria, it's not for no reason. 50 50 has never been done before. He might be a member of the 56 56 club. Uh, this is a guy that is putting up an eight plus war, something I didn't think was possible for a DH. He's David at 8. Ortiz 4. is 8.4 right now. Yeah. And fan graphs is above eight as well. David Ortiz's best season, and I know he had a lot of postseason stuff, so let's not forget about that. But his best season as a DH was a 6.3 fan graphs war. So Otani's already 30% above with a week left. Um, now, I know the stolen base stuff, like it's not completely something like maybe discount that 30%. So maybe he's still not even 40 40. He still needs a few more steals. Can, based I, add, on bigger bases. can I add my thoughts there? Sure. Add some thoughts. 
So I'm going to be a big Otani defender in this video, believe it or not. Even though I don't have any of his cards, I am a believer in Otani. But his, I think he's like 53 for 56. His he's only had three caught stealings. Off the chart. His efficiency is off his, the chart. Everybody talks about Ricky yeah. Henderson stealing 130 bases. But the year he did that, he was caught 42 times. 42 outs yeah. on the bases in 1982. With 42. that being said, I think he would have easily had 40 stolen bases this year. 50 still would have been difficult, but if he gets to 60, like he doesn't get caught. So let's say it increases by 10% and he gets caught three or four more times than he would have. Like, I don't know. I think that he would have had a, a big season, but that's the hard part about these new rules. There might be like different ways we're looking at these errors. We saw 40, 70 last year, 50, 50 this year. It's just kind of like, are, is it not as special now? Uh, uh, that's kind of what's debated on Twitter all the time. So, Well, some people in last week's comments were talking about that, that we're going to see a lot more 50-50s now. And we've talked a lot about skill sets in the past, uh, specifically with Phil and prospects. And having the power tool and the speed tool to that degree is really, really rare. So, yeah, we might see a lot more 50 stolen base seasons. Maybe we'll see more 50 home run seasons. But together, it's it's really a rare combination. So we're going to see more 30-30s probably and yeah. probably more 40-40s like Jose Ramirez, I think, three home runs away. But 50-50, yes. I still believe it's going to be a while before we see another non-Otani 50-50. So and to piggyback on that, this year, so looking at BSR, which measures base running runs, Corbin Carroll's number one at 10.7. Otani is second at 8.8. .8. So this is still an incredibly elite base running season. It's not a fluke. So he's having an incredible year. And that's why his war is so high and why we'll probably never see a DH this type of work. And it's just not normal. So yeah. One of the nice things about war is you can't you can't knock the base running rules against war because war is already adjusted for the league. So you can still compare his war against a previous. Yes. Whoever stole 50 steals in, you know, 1995, 96, Ricky Anderson seasons. Theoretically, you can compare those seasons. Um, with Otani, we're not looking at a guy, in my opinion, that's stumbling into an MVP award is third. I think yeah. he deserves it now based on what he did. And a month ago, I wasn't sure. This is the second straight month that it looks like he's going to go 10-10. Is that another record? 10 home runs, 10 steals, two, two months in a row? I don't know. The average is back above 300. Hopefully it stays there. The OPS is above 1,000. Leads the National League in what? Total bases, RBI, home runs, a bunch of other things. Like This is a guy that deserves it. And the 50-50 thing, I made a comment in previous episode that he would need to do this in order to kind of squash the whole narrative of him not deserving the MVP. But I think that in combination with the A-plus war, uh, this is another unanimous MVP, guys, and this is pretty special. Uh, now, next year, how many innings is he going to throw? What's going to be his floor for stolen bases going forward, given his efficiency like you guys were talking about? When he pitches, is he really going to attempt 40 steals next year? Or is his floor more like 30, 35? That's interesting. And, from, and like Dodgers, are they really going to allow him to pitch 100 innings? 130? No way. Um, I'd say closer to like 60 to 80. Um, given that next April he'll be 17 months removed from Tommy John, a lot of people are thinking about that because they're talking about him pitching in the playoffs this year. <laughs> yeah. With that being said, let's bring this back to cards a little bit. Um, I do think his cards have a real like possibility of going up higher. I do not think we've seen the highest of his cards. I also think there is going to be a time they're going to be lower than they are right now. Like I think both of those can be true. It might be five or 10 years. But it's amazing how the shiny new toy happens in sports cards, whether it's Pujols or Trout. I know Otani is a different category in regards to collectability, but I do think that there is a real world where in the next five or 10 years, you can get the cards cheaper. So if you missed out, like don't feel like you have to rush and buy. Be financially smart and just know there's a lot of really great Otani sets out there. So there's a lot of great ones. Credit yeah, for Scott right. right there, who was able to say both the phrase shiny new toy and the phrase pool holes in the same sentence <laughs> and didn't laugh, didn't crack a smile. I don't think he even picked up on it. I'm a oh, degenerate pervert, so I sure as hell did. That was a good um, one. Yeah, I, I would agree. I It's crazy. Just in the last like two or three weeks, Jeff and I were talking about his uh, Bowman Chrome refractor, uh, card number one, and how that like visually that's probably his best looking card. Like it's just a spectacular card just to look at. It was like 3600 bucks about three weeks ago and recently crossed $5,000. And that is a, in a PSA 10. And that's like a crazy jump for like within a month. Like that's nuts. So that's probably not a card if you want to get into Otani that you would go after right now. 
I, I would say. But there definitely are some. Yeah, I'd like to say that we talked about this. People were asking us around the All-Star break and even in August when Phil, as Phil mentioned, his first 10, 10 month happened. Uh, should I buy now or wait till the off season? And we always have seen an off season drop for baseball. That's just how it goes. But will that be the same with Otani? I don't know. And will he have some postseason heroics before then? I don't know. And his prices already have went up so much since August that even if there is an off season dip, will it ever drop to that level? So it's kind of, he's both a unicorn on the field and also a unicorn in the hobby. There's just no, exactly trying to telling where it's going to uh his cards are going to end up even in the off season when most cards go down so I, and if, from here do they go up in the next three weeks what happens what if he does in the postseason do we all agree though like do you agree with my statement they could go higher but they will go eventually lower than they are now do you agree with that or do you think there's always going to be a floor right now that's been set because that's kind of the question people are wondering like is now the time like am yeah, i going to ask the same thing a month ago yeah, that's fine. And that's yep. fine. But like in the short term, everything's irrational. So a month ago versus next month, like I'm not concerned about that, but all time, or at least for the foreseeable future, five, 10 years, is this the floor? Is kind of my question. What do you think? You're Otani holder. So I really value your perspective. I would say for Otani, unless there is a hobby wide downturn or a nationwide downturn, I feel like he's about the safest place you could have your hobby money. Okay. Yeah. But to answer your question, I would say that in the next five years that, yes, there probably will be a time when he is cheaper than he is right now. And so, so how much cheaper? I, I don't know. But I think it's also more likely. And that window could be small. But I it, that, that time will come if you can time it perfectly. Like anything could happen. Some offseason dip. The Dodgers get swept out of the playoffs this year. And like, I don't know, Harper, Machado go crazy. People could just take their eyes off Otani briefly. That could always happen. If he, has a bad last very long. if he has a bad postseason, that'll be interesting to see what happens to cards. If that happens, it doesn't feel like it's going to, but yeah. we'll see. What do you think, Phil? Well, <clears throat> I don't know for sure if within the next five years, he's going to be cheaper than he is now. Like it, it seems like, Hey, logically, this is how things work. I think on a card by card basis. Yes. His low end stuff will probably be cheaper three weeks from now, four weeks from now, six months from now, maybe. Um, but Bowman Chrome autographs. We talked about this a little bit before the season started. He's always had an issue with too much availability, too much supply. People aren't treating the Bowman Chrome autographs, the hitting pose even, as like they're forever cards often. You see the golds, the blues come up just too much. That could change starting now. Um, and maybe it is a good week to buy Otani with potential saturation across marketplaces like there's a lot of high-end otanis out there this might be the last chance to get them i actually got really good deals on aaron judge his dynasty um number 10 autograph obviously uh back in it was like late september of 2022 when he was going for like the american league home run record and it was because there were like three or four up for auction at once so hmm. um talking about like five years from now like i i Five believe, may have been too short. Let's say even 10. Uh, I still don't know for sure, but I think his prices will definitely go higher before they... I, agree. I think the first half of the statement I can agree with. They're going to be higher in the future than they are today. Are they going to be cheaper within the next 10 years than they are today? Maybe, maybe not. And I think, it, like you said, it depends on the card. Some cards, especially the lower print one, print run ones that are in collector's hands that... I don't know if you'll see cheaper on those. So here's the kind of the elephant in the room, in my opinion. Can we just discuss how expensive these cards really are? Right? Like we talk about these things like, man, it's a good buy right now. Like if you want a good Otani, you're dropping $25,000. You can get a good one for 15, maybe. You can get an okay one at 10. But like, does that, like, do you ever kind of just think about what we're saying? Like, it's it's just pretty crazy to consider. Yeah, I, mean, I think and I, I, think have, I have a hard time with it for a card where there's a blue. That's a bad example. You have a blue. I don't want to talk about that card. Yeah. Let's we can like right. There's a blue like right now. What you bought your card for, it's worth more now. Like plain and simple, you could sell it for forty percent more probably. To be honest, uh, maybe not that much. Yeah, probably probably about forty percent more. You paid for it. And so my question is though is like there are three hundred blue Bowman chromatographs. Maybe not all of them are redeemed. 
right? Whatever. But there's hundreds of Bowman Chrome Blue autographs. So like, is it really, can all of them sustain the $25,000 price? Plus they have the golds and the oranges. And that's only in Bowman Chrome. There's Topps Chrome and there's Definitive and not a Dynasty, whatever you want to say. Like these card prices are so high. Are we really that confident that this is sustainable? It's kind of my question. I think it comes down to what we've talked about before. You look at the uh, the size of a player's market and if the demand is going to be there. There's yeah. no certainty for sure, but if you compare them to a guy who another really good player, say like uh, Freddie Freeman, the the demand for the uh, collectors is is just a, a much higher degree. So, yeah. I don't know. I feel like, yes, you have to look at it, especially when you're talking about those kind of numbers where you could get rid of it and make really big changes in your non-card life. Or like the guy who was asking Chris, you could buy his engagement ring. Yes, it's kind of, um, you, you do have to think about those things. But when, you, when you're looking at Otani, it's just hard to really compare him in price and uh, demand market value, I guess you'd say to other players. Chris, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, he's one of the few athletes in the world, well, the few baseball players in the world that has strong demand on multiple continents. I mean, I just, I don't think there's a ton of demand coming from Taiwan for Juan Soto cards, but there sure as hell is for Shohei Otani cards. Like he, he literally, his popularity spans oceans. Like he's as close to like Lionel Messi that the baseball card, the baseball world's ever going to get. At least and, so far. And he's the only baseball player that's really known outside of baseball. And that's a big deal. Yeah. On top of being international. Like he is an icon. And I think he's fantastic. And I understand the rationale for the pricing. It's just sometimes it's hard for me to consider that much amount of money on a card where there's just so many other comparable copies, right? So I don't know. Phil, what are you thinking? Yeah, you know, and, and one of the things that we can't uh, forget to mention is that his cards will still fluctuate with his performance. If he goes in next year and sucks or gets injured, yeah, then Scott's right, and you might still be right, Scott. But um, there's still catalysts for further growth. What if he wins four MVPs, Scott? What clean player has won four MVPs? Zero. Tell Only us ones. Little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he may get more MVPs than Bonds, even though Bonds was dead steroids. Like, he could end up with eight MVPs. Like, there's a world where if he can stay healthy, the next four years he'll win four more, right? I don't know. It's it's not – it's it's unlikely, but you're right. There is a universe that where, that, where that's for sure. That's what you're looking at. Yeah. What's – I think – really good team. Yeah. He needs a World Series more than MVP, in my opinion. That's what would really help his cards, I think, really go crazy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so – I don't know. I just feel like would you rather have an Otani or worth $25,000 or let's say your favorite players, one of his very best cards, if not the very best card of that said player ever made of a Hall of Famer, but not Otani. Well, I think Scott, that's exactly what you're dealing with, right? I mean, you're looking at building your collections of your favorite players and you're deciding whether or not it's worth some buying one of those that is much rare. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That that's a great question. Yeah. So I asked my Instagram audience uh, earlier this year, "Have you ever spent ten thousand dollars on a sports card?" And eighty-eight percent of them said no. I was surprised that twelve thousand, sorry, no thousand, twelve percent even said yes. So yeah. that's there's a lot of money in sports cards, but it can be really difficult with FOMO. But at the end of the day, it is cards, and I have a bad thing if I don't have a player's cards, you can't appreciate them. I don't believe that anymore so like if you don't have otani cards doesn't mean you can't appreciate what otani's doing and still root for him and still understand his cards are valuable so yeah no there are a lot of people that want like a stake that's a phrase i i've i've heard people use a lot in messages like oh i don't have any i don't have any stake in otani like i need to get something so i can appreciate this but you could also like you said just look back just sit just back and it. appreciate it like this is incredible what we're seeing no one's ever done this before so appreciate it on that level it stinks if you're a Padre fan or a Giants fan and you don't have any Otani cards, then I get it. Like, that's that's rough. It's like being a Red Sox fan last year and uh, not having any Aaron Judge cards, like, or two why, years ago. Like, why that, you, that could be tough. Why didn't you say the Rockies? They're also in the NL West. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, uh, technically. Okay, any other thoughts around Otani? I do think, like, we're talking about, like, there, there are ways in that don't cost 
that aren't five figures. Like I, I truly think, and Phil, let me know what you think about this. I, I think his finest, his finest rookie card is one of his best images. And I, I still see that base card selling for like under a hundred bucks. The refractors like maybe under 200 or right around there. I think that's a fantastic card. It's one of his few base hitting images. I like that card a lot. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. I, be responsible with Otani. Um, what I would add also, like, yeah, there's some, there's going to be some opportunities. It's not just the super high end stuff, the grail stuff, like, like Chris is talking about, like the, the sapphire base card. Yeah, it's a pitching pose, but he only has one sapphire base image. And if Tops is resurrecting the Tops Chrome Sapphire brand, which it seems like they're doing with Sapphire this year by putting on card autographs in it and hopefully not butchering the images for those autographs. Gotcha. Cutting the print run down by about uh, 50% of last year as well. Maybe the base cards are more sought after. So there's there's things, there's inefficiencies to look at and understand like the hierarchy. And also when he has multiple red ink autos, know that. When you're buying the Topps Chrome update auto, that's a sticker. Know that he's got you know the, the hitting pose. That's not a sticker. Understand that he's got multiple black parallels. Um, and apply a discount. Because... I mean, I've picked up within the last year and a half two PSA 10 black parallels of his, not from Series 2, but from the other set, from Update, including his rookie debut, paid under five grand for each of those. That's a massive discount, but of course, that's because he's got a black in, in Series 2, which came earlier. So just kind of like know what you're doing, understand the Bowman Chrome autograph thing, the pop reports like Scott yeah. brought up, 300 blue refractor autos, understand that his base autographs are both short printed um understand the whole redemption thing too and you know with tops chrome he was mixed most was live but from a bowman chrome perspective in bowman chrome the product itself unless there's like some image variations where those were live those are all expired redemptions now so um there's definitely study the market and understand what you're getting into but there could be some opportunities in all ends of uh low end mid, mid end high end yeah, there yeah thank you for lost. yeah thanks Sorry. for bringing that up phil because there were some i was looking for otani sales over the weekend and there were some pretty high dollar sales on sealed 2018 bowman chrome uh hobby boxes and i don't know if those buyers know that there there can't be any autos in there unless except maybe the image variations at a 25 there could be those in there but i mean you know one in what twenty five thousand boxes something like that so yeah, you're right. I mean, that's information that that you thank you for dropping that. Like, yeah, there there are no Bowman Chrome hitting image autos in those boxes. Well, are we concerned about buying boxes in general because of the whole CT scanning thing? Like, right. I wouldn't yeah. touch those for no, those two either. reasons combined, personally. So yeah, no, that's yeah, a there's point a also. Sapphire 18 Sapphire box uh, sold yeah. yesterday. Fanatics Collect. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I uh, I made a run for it, but I bid like. 20 to 30 percent less than what i would have because of the you know the recent developments mm -hmm. there what did it yeah. end up Bill? uh last time i checked it was like low sixes but okay. that was before extended bidding that's when i bailed out yeah i saw that i didn't know what it went okay i'm also seeing a lot of just um in terms of uh numbers like a lot of like top series two base cards in a high grade just selling just turning over regularly would you guys, how do you feel about that? Is that something that an average collector should look at to be like, hey, I have a PSA 10 Otani or are the pops on those just going to be so outrageous that there's no point? I would rather buy a, like what you said with Finest personally, like a nice refractor or something that is numbered, but not as great of a, I don't know. It just feels yeah, like those high right. pop are burnt so many people that those are going to be the first to go if something turns like quickly. Some, some, non, some non rookie short yeah. print. Auto Second variant. year, nice gold refractor from Topps Chrome for 500 bucks. Or I don't know if that's what it is now. They're probably higher than that. But my point is you can get some really cool card for that price. Agreed. Agreed. But just I'm usually I want to put briefly into context how incredible his season is. I got this card in the mail. It's the Topps Now 4040 card. So I bought one because you have this shot at the autos. Yeah. Not a good shot, but my wife greenlit the purchase of one of these. This arrived uh, at my house the day after he went 50-50. <laughs> that was bad. That was just incredible. That's yeah. really cool. Okay, so I'm looking at the most watched sports cards on mm -hmm. eBay. Do you guys want to guess what the top 10 baseball cards are? I know there's a blue Bowman Chrome auto and a PSA 10 that's up for bids. I think it. Let me rephrase that. Bid. The top 10 baseball players are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Players. Players. Well, I mean, like 
How many of the top ten are Otani? That's kind of what I'm getting at. Ah, oh, eight. eight. One, two. <laughs> I think it's all of them. Three. He's all of them. So like, this is this is what we're talking about, though. And like for me, oh, Satchel Page ups up there too, and a Babe Ruth. But my point is, like, you guys are absolutely right. Contact. Like these cards have a ton of international growth appeal, and that's completely different. And that kind of changes the formula for buying these cards and what you're going to get. I still won't because there's other really cool cards I personally like, and that's okay. But I understand, and I would not be against anybody for doing so now. But I do think there is absolute risk more than what you guys may be hinting at, but just my thoughts. Well, there's always, there's always risk. And especially, I mean, like you said, it's, it's a hobby, it's cardboard. There's always risk. Like Phil mentioned, there's injury risk. So yes, any active player, there's going to be risk. I, I kind of wish our friend teapot was here because when Chris was talking about the international appeal of Otani, I know that's part of what led to such high growth for basketball cards. Um, because they're international appeal and they really uh, sell a lot of high end basketball in asia and so i yeah i'd wonder what what teapot's thoughts would be on that so yeah i agree so here's a question for you would you rather have an otani bowman chrome hitting red autograph what do we think that would go for give me a rough set rough estimate what do you think that goes for it'd be the millions yeah probably like a million bucks if someone someone presented that for auction probably around a million bucks or would you rather have the 50-50 50-50 ball. The card. The card? I take the card too. Yeah, I yeah, saw I saw the, the Dodgers offered 300,000, is that right? 300,000 for the ball and it was turned down. So yeah. I'd be interested to see what what happens with that. But uh, Phil, what would you do? Phil, I, I want your opinion. I'm pretty sure I know what Jeff and, and Scott would say. But what would you do if you caught that ball and the Dodgers offered you $300,000 for it? The first thing you need to do is somehow leave the ballpark without giving away the ball to the right. Dodgers because then you get all the leverage and then all of a sudden they know that it's not just them making offers it's the entire world yep. the issue yep. then becomes like you have to get rid of that ball fast right like god forbid he goes 60 60 55 55 like it probably doesn't matter as much but yeah stuff like this is going to be hottest like after the news event happens so but you can't overplay your hand because that's happened multiple times so I think you have to send it to golden ASAP and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a little bit less or a little bit more than 300K. I, I don't know if he's going to get 500K plus net. Like, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, it, it's all about two crazy buyers at the end of the day. Bitters, I, whatever. But I that totally was a huge think- offer. That was a huge offer from a team. I've never heard of an offer that high. So that's there's a lot to be said for that. And I, I would try to work in some other fan-supported part of yeah that. i want to i want to shake his hand and say congratulations um, and throw give me 300k a handshake and some two season tickets for next year yeah. yeah and i'm good to go my wife said she'd trade the ball for a half an hour with decoy so <laughs> thankfully she didn't catch it did you see the kid with the blue hat in the video that kind of he had his hand on it at the end and he was upset that yeah, money yeah. probably would have been a lot more important for him getting his life started maybe but uh that's uh, Imagine that just being so close to it and just like, would that send you into a depression? Might. Like, say if this ends up going for 700K, I know it probably won't. But whatever it goes for, man. Yeah. I mean, it's already, it's already, he missed out on 300K. I mean, yeah, that ball was like bouncing and he was reaching for it and just kind of like couldn't quite get there. I mean, I don't know. I think I've launched myself over the, over that railing. I'll risk a collarbone or something. That is, that is worth getting hurt for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jeff, also, I mean, Jeff die, dives in slow pitch softball. I'm pretty sure he was going to lay out <laughs> for that ball. Yeah, if he could. I would have sacrificed the body for it. Guaranteed uh, broken collarbone for a 1% shot at the ball. I don't know. 1%? Whoa. I, I would do it. If you jumping like around that, that, like, how can you, you have to like land on the ball at that point. Like, how are you going to, how can you get in a decent position to then like find the ball? You're going to probably have a concussion. <laughs> yeah, you got to have good eye hand coordination for sure. Yeah. I don't, so yeah. Mark McGuire's baseball 70th home run sold for three million dollars. I don't. I think there's a real world where he gets a lot more than three hundred thousand mm, dollars. I don't know. That was that was uh, sort of a nuclear event, and it was a nuclear event. Like, I understand, but like I, I could see it going higher. I am surprised, know? Scott. I really thought you would be the guy who'd be like, "Well, I want Otani to have it," so I would just, I, I take the deal and just let let Otani have the ball. I really thought that would be your take. I would, I would need to talk to you three and tie you four fine gentlemen and say, "Hey, 
what do you think this would go for? Because at that moment, Otani is seven hundred million dollars. If he really wants to buy it for one million, I wouldn't feel that bad personally. Well, he doesn't have it yet. He won't have that money in for ten more years. And plus, the other half got stolen. So, right. uh, but my point is, third payment. That's the yeah. question. Yeah, right? like Otani, pay me in two years to a million dollars. But my point is, like, while I would want Otani to have it, I don't feel like I need to cut him a deal on it when it's like life changing money. Maybe that's like not in the good graces of baseball gods, but it just feels like, why do I need to cut him a favor? Yeah, I, all the all the money that dude spends uh, gambling recklessly. <laughs> like this is a once in a lifetime, <laughs> once in a multi gen, like multi lifetime event. Just so lucky. I, I don't know. I can also see the perspective. Like, hey, counter at five hundred thousand dollars plus. Let me shake his hand. Sure, I'll do it, Dodgers. But I don't know. Yeah. It also depends know. how injured I am. Like if, if I go for that ball, my if my arm's in a sling, I've had like an eye gouge, I'm like a nostril rip, and I'm missing a tooth. You know, they're gonna have to pay up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, one, one of my customers caught the or ended up with this Pujols' like six hundred ninety eighth home run. Ooh. It was career, and he decided to to give the ball to him and got some pictures and a bat and everything. And uh, by the time I responded to him, he told me what happened. I was like a few hours late, or it. I think he reached out to me like an hour after it happened. Like, um, but yeah, I would have probably given him some feedback to, you know, not to, to leave the game with the ball. And then um, decide. It, it, it's tough because not everybody's going to look at things the way I do. People have different values. People's brains are wired differently. Um, but it's hard. Like my favorite player. I don't know. Yeah. Like you said, it's, it's uh, especially the news cycle and something like that. Yeah, if he does go 60-60, what happens to this value? And for, for Pujols, he catches the 698. Well, then yeah. 689 and then the 700, and people start to forget about the 698. So, so yeah, you got to – you gotta. it's tough. You got to think think quick and try to make the right decision. I don't think anything but the 60-60 would hurt the value of this ball, though. The only thing that right. could hurt it, though, is if he goes 0 for 12 in the division series and – the Dodgers get swept by the Padres. That could hurt a little bit, but I wonder. I do you think he's this season is good and like, I, I mean, I feel like his season is so incredible. Let's say he goes over twelve and they get they lose three in a row, like to the the Padres in the division series or the God help us the Mets in the division series. Like, do his cards really take a huge hit? I think people would just be like, wow, it's too bad their their pitching staff fell apart. I, the I think they do take a hit. I don't know how much, yeah. but. I'm a Mookie Betts fan. Last year was tough. It made me sad. You're a Ronald Acuna Jr. fan after his great season. He was bad. That sucked. That hurt his momentum for sure. I I do think it matters in some ways in the moment, just not long term. I think it matters less over the course of the long run because Otani's going to do great things in the postseason eventually. But like if he did have a bad start, his first postseason, oh, regular season merchant, you're going to hear so much of that. I do think it would get into people's brains on social media. We're all irrational. Maybe, but this is his first time. First I don't think time. it matters. Trout went once, and he doesn't ever hear the end of it. I know he hasn't gone since, but I don't. It's it's yeah. for the short term. I a lot of it's the attention. The attention would yeah. go off Otani onto other players. So last year, the auction volume of uh, Acuna was still pretty strong. He got bounced out early. I thought I got a good deal on his cards. Uh, now, in hindsight, not so great. But you have to think about all the other players that were focused on, and I think. I think Otani and the team failing first round exit, if that happens, um, or second round, you know, because they've got to buy. Um, I think that could present a possible opportunity if like the auction volume strong. Uh, we'll see. That's when they, I agree. That's when I would consider looking at it. Like, because his once the playoffs are over, like then momentum will start to swing up again as we get as we get close to the MVP announcement. MVP announcement, another unanimous MVP. Yeah. I don't know how much MVP announcements really matter when it's already baked in. I don't think it does much. Another good time to buy would be a week before that if there's good auction volume because yeah I mean it's at this point it's a given unless it's not expected. If I was going to sell I would wait until the spring if that were to happen because that's when people get excited about oh he's pitching this year. Oh, I just true, watched yeah. a grainy little uh uh smartphone video of him pitching man he looks good. Like that's when you're going to see higher sales. You might even see higher sales then than you will now to be honest if everything goes to plan. So so, but I, I want to just say, I'm really happy for you guys holding Otani. And even though I didn't buy any, I don't regret it. I'm still not going to buy any right now, but one day I will, and it'll be awesome. Stay strong. So, Stay it'll, strong. Be, it'll be good when that happens. You all know my plan and why I'm not doing it. I think you all understand why, right? I'll, I'll tell everybody else later what I'm doing. You might not agree with me, but you understand, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we understand. I, I, I understand completely. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. 
Okay. He has right. so many cards. Otani. I know we talked cards. about that, but like that presents a lot of risk too. And I think that's Scott's biggest issue. That's like, my biggest issue. Hierarchy is confusing from the, from the bottom to the top. Yeah. What are his most coveted cards? And there's always been such high turnover at the high end segment of his stuff. So like if people are turning over the high end, then like the mid end and the small, I know it's different buyers, but that's at risk too. Like <laughs> it's, it's all at risk in case uh, demand drops. That's my exact concern. And I know I'll always have a chance at a cool Otani because they're always available. If it's not the number one set, it's the number one B set with just as cool of a card in my For eye. Now. So. For now. For now. There's so many. They'll always they'll always be around. Okay. We can even look at LeBron as an example. He still has his gold Bowman Chrome rookie um, that you can get for like 20 grand, number to 50. Like I'm just saying, like there's there's always gonna be cool cards around. I don't think they're gonna be locked away forever. Probably Do you agree not. with that, Phil? What are your thoughts? Do you agree with that statement? Well, uh, uh, I can't really talk about that, but the Bowman Chrome Auto, you're talking uh, the Bowman Chrome of LeBron, like that's he had a lot of cards, but not like really like staple flagship like gold refractors, right? And yeah, I mean, like that card went from like super super coveted to not very coveted, even though the BGS eight or whatever Lico three sold it for, he might have got like twenty eight or something, but. Or PSA 8, I forget what the grade was, but yeah, I mean, you're right. You're right for sure. I mean, that's why supply of cards matters. It doesn't seem like it does right now for Otani, but it always ends up mattering. The supply side always matters just as much as the demand side. I agree. But I would not fault anyone if you're ever going to invest in a player to invest in Otani. I would not think you were wrong. It's just... We'll have to see what happens. Yeah, anyway, I, I do think I do think the lack of a Bowman Chrome refractor auto is is kind of a bigger deal than than it gets made out to be. I mean, that's those are usually numbered to four ninety nine, and they're not there. And we already know the base images are short printed. So I mean, that's a lot of Otani. I know there's two images, but it's that's made cool. up. Like it's the same number with the other images, though. Like so, like while it would have been great if there was just a Bowman Chrome and there was the other image of the pitching, then yeah, I'd feel totally the same way. But that. Like I know the pitching is the B card at this point, but it's still a great card. It is. I'd be happy it to first. own it. Yeah, it has so the like, atomic parallel that the other one doesn't have, which looks awesome. Like every like it has an argument. So like that's my thing though. It's like while yes, there's no refractor, it's still there's still probably equal amount four hundred ninety nine of the pitching one that you can get. So yeah, like total. Yeah, yeah. There's just, and there's no waves. I correct me if I'm wrong, Phil. There's no waves in 2018 Bowman Chrome, right? In either release, I don't think there's any waves. It's Not just for Otani. Colors. Yeah. Not for Otani. Right. He has it for he has the Atomic when he's pitching. That's the only other parallel that's additional yeah. for the pitching is the Atomic, which is a great card. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, a couple great. of those just sold. I think a PSA 10 just sold for like forty some odd thousand dollars. I think a BGS 9.5 ended on Sunday. Well, I don't maybe know that's what, what I'm thinking of then. It went, actually, I know the seller who sold it and he offered it to me and I said, no. And actually, I think I showed it to you guys, didn't I? Before you I bought your blue? I don't think so. It was the same guy who I offered the BGS, no, the the green PSA 9 that I showed you really quick for half a second. Maybe. So, I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Well, let us in the comments down below. Otani, very, very tough time to decide if you want to buy or sell, yeah. but high risk, high reward. Let us know what you think down in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.